five, four, three, two, one. Lift off. <laughs> <laughs> Tonight, I am joined by Matthew Bird. And and Matthew Bird and I have a bit of a history, and we're going to get into a bit of that. And yeah. this wouldn't, these chats wouldn't have been right not to have Matthew. So welcome to the chat, Matthew. Really, really lovely. Thank you for doing this for me. Can you tell us a bit about yourself? Where where are you? What age you are? Um, and uh, just just tell you about it. I, 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 will, be, I will be 57. Next month, wow! I live in I live in Houston, Texas. I grew up in Texas. Lived in Texas pretty much all my life, except for the period that I was in the uh, in the military. I was in the U.S. Navy and was stationed in Virginia, and then lived in Virginia for a while after my uh, military career. And then moved back to Houston. I, I mean, moved back to Texas in uh, 1999. Grew up, born and raised in the Dallas area. My wife as well. And uh, now we live in Houston, been in Houston since, when did I move to? 2008, I moved to Houston, been here ever since. Wow. Um, I'm, I'm a salesman by trade. Uh-oh. I'm, I'm in inside sales now. I, I do uh, inside sales for a very large, in fact, the largest HVAC yeah. uh, manufacturing company in the world. And we have a big base here in Houston, so... Okay, so so several things. So Houston, okay, well, get there in a second. Dallas, okay, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. us from the UK, we think of one thing with Dallas. And I'm sorry, it's never going to go away. But J R U E, okay. You know, it's funny. I was I was thinking about that last night. I figured this would come up. I actually grew up about probably seven miles from South Fork. Oh, uh, and the, so the, fact, house, we, the house itself is just. Just a house. Then they never filmed there. It was just the outside. Yeah, and it's 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 really not that impressive. I mean, it is a big house, but when you drive past it, it's just a big white house sitting in the middle of a pasture. That's about it. In a pasture. Class. Okay, and of Houston then. I think of one thing of when I think about Houston, okay, apart from the spacey sort of stuff. Okay. Houston, right. We have a problem. But I think of Jean Michel Jarre, the musician. And he did a live concert in Houston. And it must be in the early eighties. And I have a big Jean Michel Jarre fan. And he projected on the side of buildings and stuff he got there. And it was around the time when uh, there was a guy called, is it Ron Hubbard? It, he was a, he was an astronaut. Bless him, he died in the first shuttle disaster. And he was going to play music in space on a saxophone with Jean-Michel Jarre. And that never happened. And there was a whole piece in that concert after the disaster, first shuttle disaster, and it played the piece that he would have played that they rehearsed, and it was all very emotional. And that's what I was thinking about. It's funny the the, the little things that trigger and and, and uh, that remind you. And you're in sales, right? So so when I mean, you know that's my history. I mean, I've been on the road right from I was 19 years old. My first company car was I was 19, and all of a sudden I get to 55, and it's just stopped. That's gone. It's finished. That part of my life, the chapter's closed. But it's it never really closes. Once, once a a sales guy, you're always a sales guy. Um, right. Uh, I mean, people say you know you you could sell snow to Eskimos. Uh, you know the, all of those usual things that are insulting to salespeople <laughs> all over the world, sand Arabs and all that sort of stuff. Um, uh, and uh, part part of me misses it. Part of me misses on the road and that contact with all those customers and that, that, that bit. But I'm enjoying this new part of my life at the moment as well. Yeah, I, I, I really like inside sales. I, I'm, I'm glad that I am not on the road anymore. I like coming home at the same time every night when I do have to go to the office. And then, you know, most of the, most of the week I, I work from home. So, you know, I'm, no, no, more road, no more road time for me. Uh-huh. I'm, I'm in inside sales. I do all my... Sales through through phone calls and, and emails. Yeah, a lot of my stuff had changed to that way. I was national account manager, and uh, again, there was I only really had two clients, two really really big clients. Yes, I had thousands of units, but there were two clients that I dealt with, um, and I loved it. Um, okay, but that's cool. A funny, a friend of mine, he actually took my photographs at, at uh, my wedding, which is coming up 
sugar. I'll, uh, I'll be 27 or is it 28? I can't work out the math. Anyway, it's a long time. Um, a fellow called Paul. And uh, he was in refrigeration, uh, how we met back in the catering trade way, way back back then. Mm-hmm. Um, and we became, became friendly. And he was a photographer. And I went, yeah, do you know what? Don't want a big professional photographer. You do my photographs, Paul. You're really good at this. I've seen stuff. And, you know, there was a lot of pressure to put on him. But they were great. But about, uh, uh, we lost touch then. And about, I think it's about 10 years ago on Facebook, I, I came across him again. And he was walking, the photograph, it was his profile photograph. There was very little of it. Profile photograph of him walking along a beach, which is fine, but he had a dog. Now, the curious thing is, it was a sunny beach, beautiful, and people from the UK don't walk along beaches with dogs. You might do it in the US because the beach is just down the road. But for us to take a dog to a sunny beach, that's a lot of effort. And I'm going, what the hell is he? So he he is now in Hawaii selling HVAC. Nice. He went and, nice. uh, and there's a part owner in a large HVAC com- company over there. And he his, his marriage had split up and he, around the time we were getting married around that, that was all finished. Um, but he started a whole new life and he's moved out and that's where he lives now. And, you know, so um, salesmen unite. Yeah. Yeah. You know, salesmen, salesmen get a bad rap, but you know, one of the things w- w- that I always tell people is, you know, nothing, nothing in the world happens until somebody sells something. Exactly. It's like, if, you, if you're going to build a bridge, somebody's got to sell the, the rebar. Somebody's got to sell the concrete of the, somebody's got to sell the somebody's got to sell the the guy who draws it up you know the architects you know so that first kind of coke had to be, that first kind of coke had to be sold right and, exactly. and everything yeah. everything but I, it always amazes me everything that you look at i mean i look at the remote control and i go wow look at that remote control there and there's ink on that remote control and somebody somebody sold that ink somewhere or right or, somebody Somebody had to sell the plastic. Yeah. Somebody had to, yep. you know, the sell the or the mold and every single thing. There's salesman by them all. So, uh, yeah, I, I, I get it. I, that's that's the, the creed of the salesman. Um, and your time in military and Navy. Yes. Yes. Because I, uh, I was an aviation electrician, worked on very, very large helicopters for uh, eight, did that for eight years. And, and did you, were you always, were you a landlubber? Or did you ever? Do I it? was. I was. I. I was what is called a ground pounder. So I didn't. You know, and I was enlisted. I wasn't an officer, so I didn't. I didn't do any flying. I wasn't a pilot. Okay. But there were times when I would have to go up into the helicopters for what they call check rides, where you know, say we did some work on the on the uh, uh, the the autopilot system, you know, and we would have to go up there and consult with the pilots while they were while they were flying and stuff like that, and. uh Went to the Persian Gulf in eighty seven for what's what they call the first Gulf War, which was the Iran Iraq War. Yeah. Because the helicopters that I worked on were were minesweepers. We we hauled minesweeping gear out the back of the helicopters. You must have been in your water early twenties then. I was about what's that? I, you must have been in your early twenties because I was about I, I, I was I was about nineteen or twenty. I was very young. I remember watching it. I had a boy my buddy bought my first house when I was nineteen. And wow! Nice. I, I, and I remember watching, watching Sky TV. Just watch, just all night long. You know, and it was because uh, that was there was no internet as such back then, and 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 that was we were all glued to that, and waiting for what was going to happen. That's class. Yeah, so it was there. So, so, so you never ever had a chance to fly down to your beach with Wagner playing like Apocalypse Now. You, you didn't do that. No, never did. Never did anything like that somewhere. <laughs> We didn't have any weapons on on board, you know. So we were just we were just towing minesweepers. That's all we were doing. Do you have uh, family, Matthew? Yes, I do. I, I am married to a very, very, very wonderful woman. Nancy is my wife. We have three grown children and six grandkids. Wow, six wonderful grandchildren. Yeah, who I absolutely adore. Oh wow, fantastic! Um, uh, today was Easter Monday. Here uh, and uh, there yeah. too, and uh, traditionally we have uh, a big Easter egg hunt at our property. So I think there was about five hundred eggs of all shapes and sizes hidden all around the property, and uh, twenty-three kids, I believe it was, along with adults, 
the majority of those kids were foster children or our own foster kids and my sister's two, my sister's two uh, wives. They have all fully foster as well. So um, it was just a, a massive thing that the kids were all out doing the uh, egg hunt and then they all come in with chef's hats on and we got them to make their own pizzas and then everybody at dinner and I, I'm, no, I, I've just I've just escaped from that. So that, that's my dad. And I'm sitting there going, oh, there's something happened on the 1st of April, 2024. And I, I, I just got to, I, 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 well, I got to get away. I got to get away. I can't, and I haven't. I haven't because today, 1st of April, um, uh, as a historical thing, is a set of course competizioni, the green hell, the Nordish life has now been released. Don't, so, don't get me started. Oh, well, we'll get, we'll get to that. Um, all right, uh, uh, Matthew, we are heard about your wife because um, she, she she sounds fantastic and, and uh, uh, we've talked about her in the past, so, so all, all the best to Nancy for me. Um, how, how we know each other, uh, and it's a bit grey, so fill in the blanks with me. So, well, uh, L- LFM, uh, I, I, we start, I think we both went through our rookie phase of LFM roughly about the same time. Pretty, pretty close. Which was a, close. a September or October of not last year, the year before. And in and around that time, we bumped into each other. And I don't know if you came onto my stream or we messaged through LFM or I crashed into you. Done <laughs> something like that there. But. Well, actually, <laughs> talking about crashing, I was the one that crashed into you at uh, in Barcelona. But uh, um, yeah, I, I had seen you on your stream once or twice, and I, you know, I had watched guys like you know Claudio Claudio Zaza and and Rory Alexander, and tried to watch a little bit of Jardier. Um Let's see who else uh, and uh, Jamie, you know, Red Red Ken, yeah, yeah. seen him a couple times. And then, uh, you know, came across you just by happenstance and, you know, was kind of kind of listening and watching. I was like, well, you know, this this, you know, we have a lot in common. We're pretty, pretty close to the same age. Yeah. I started LFM around the same time. So I just kind of started following you and was, you know, throwing stuff in here and there on chat. And, you know, it, we we did end up, you know, with the, it's it's hard with the with the time difference between Texas and and the UK, you know, to get on servers at the same time. And yeah. of course you've got the, you've got the ELO. So you may or may not be in the same split and stuff like that. And we, we got in a couple races together. I, I'll never forget. You know, I still have nightmares about it. That but I think the first, the very first time that we got in the same split, we were at Barcelona. I must and remember. I, I must, I, I, there was a short, I think I made a short. I think I'll put it at the end of this. I, I must take a note. I must take a note. Frenemies. Pretty me, sort of. I know what and, you you know, know, I had gotten a good start. You had you had gotten you had gotten punted there at the start, so you you were you were behind me somewhere, you know, because it's hard. You know, you only you only had so many names up on your little yeah, yeah. on your relatives, you know. So I didn't really know where you were, and then I then I got punted in the chicane, and and you ended up in front of me by by a, a couple seconds, I guess, and I was. I was gaining on you and gaining on you, and I, and I saw you down the straight. I'm like, all right, now, you know, I got what you know what we call in aviation target fixation. I was just fixated on getting as close to you as I possibly could. Totally missed my breaking spot. Vortex of danger. Running, <laughs> ended up running into you, and I, I felt I felt so bad. I was, was like, good. I was you know, inside well, my no, but those, those things happened, and because we knew each other a bit about that, that was okay. We laughed it off, and that that that's yeah. fine. All right, well, that brings us to sim racing. <clears throat> so, w- when did you start sim racing, Matthew? Well, it, it, to, to, to go really far back and to, and to really date myself, yeah. my parents bought us Pong. No, I don't know if you remember Pong. Yeah, with yeah. Little, I still have one. You know, you, got, yeah. you had like maybe two maybe two games, and then from there it went over to, there. Just in, in that rack, there's a grandstand yeah. Pong machine. Then it went to the Atari twenty six hundred, and uh, I, I guess I guess probably around high school age, I kind of got out of the video games, and then got back into video games later on with uh, like the first PlayStation, uh, and then the Xbox came out. But I'd always I'd always been into into driving games whenever I could, but you know I always felt so doing it on controller just doesn't it doesn't seem right. You know I needed. I, I had always wanted a wheel and some pedals and 
you know, that the big question is, you know, you know, how, you know, how do you use it? Do you, do you put it in your lap? Do you put it on the coffee table or whatever? So a couple of years ago, uh, I guess it was on Amazon. I saw the, the Logitech G29 or G290 or whatever it was on sale. Mm -hmm. So, oh, you know, just a little, a little side tidbit that, that I know, you know, and I don't know if the, some of the other guys know, but I, I used to be into RC racing real big. Yes. I was going to mention that. Yeah. That kind of got out of that, but wanted to stay in the hobby. So I started painting bodies, doing the airbrushing of the bodies and it started selling them and it was doing well. So I had a, I had a ton of money in my PayPal account that was completely separate from, you know, the, the, the main, the main home finances, if you will. So, uh, you know, I asked my wife, Hey, I want to get this wheel. And so I bought the wheel with my, with my painting funds. And then I needed to get a, I bought a, I bought a little a GT Omega wheel stand. And then what I would, I would take the, the, the chair from the dining room into the living room in front of our big 80 inch 4k and would sit there the as right. Cause yeah. you know, I, I, I didn't want to start slow. Cause I'm like, you know, am I really going to like this or not? Yeah. And, uh, Still in love with it, and then you know got got the rig had the had the Logitech on the on the rig that I bought. I bought a, a, a GT Omega Titan because it looked a little better than the profile. And since it's a kind of in our family game room, my wife wanted something that's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing, so I went with the Titan instead of the instead of the profile type. You know, because yeah. the profiles kind of have that industrial okay. type look to them. And, uh, then, then I, I, I had to go direct drive. So I, you know, I did a lot of research and at the time Fanatec was pretty much the top dog. So I went with the, I went with the CSL DD and the V3 pedals. It was playing on Xbox for a, a long time. It was doing some Xbox leagues and, uh, what, man, I would always see, and was that I would always see the LFM videos. Oh, okay. So, so, so that was, was, that was ACC on xbox oh yeah like me okay we yeah. did that too yes yes, yes. as i said of course the companies yeah i you know i used to play forza a lot yeah, yeah. and but we, you know I, we can almost discount that stuff because we all kind of did it i suppose it's right. it's when the 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 real and i would say acc on xbox with a wheel is real yeah and in gran turismo on the on the playstation 2 i played a lot of that but again it was always with the controllers you know and i i thought that that was like oh this is a simulation yeah, this is this is how you know driving a real race car is going to be, you know. And then once I bought ACC, I was like, I I never I never played Forza or those other games again after I got ACC. Never, you know. And uh, so you know, like I said, I really wanted to get into LFM. Um, that the Xbox just did not work very well for ACC because you, I would when I was in a league, we'd have like one or two races a week, and I would. I would practice, I would practice, and then we'd get into the server on race night, and it would crash, you know, or I would have a disconnect or whatever. I was like, you know, I I don't want to do this anymore. So, um, again, my wonderful wife let me buy <laughs> let me buy a gaming PC, and then you know, I mean, once once I got the PC, I mean, it was like a whole other world because you can put dashboards on there and you can mm -hmm. do the rumbles on the pedals, and I've got a raw, I've got a I've got a butt kicker for my. Uh, from my rig underneath my seat, you know, so you can really, really feel what's going on because that's, you know, that's the one big thing with sim racing versus real racing is you don't have those G forces. You can't really drive by the seat of your pants. You have to get your, you have to get your feedback either from the sound, uh, from the, from the force you feedback in the wheel or, you know, Pedal, in, in other yeah, case, you see, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. And every the like, there's another haptic that you get help. Mm -hmm. Every like, you know, you yeah, the haptics, the, the haptics helped a lot because the thing that I was finding, uh, you know, that took me took me a while to realize that the most important thing in ACC is is braking, how well you can brake, how well you can trail brake. Um, and once I once I got those haptics on the brake pedal, I was able to feel more of when the uh, ABS was kicking in. And you know, once I got those haptics on the pedals, I mean, I knocked. The, yeah, yeah. I mean, when I tried them, I knocked off. A Senec in the half of my Amazing. very best time in, at Kyalami. Amazing when you get you know when you so, uh, when, once you get it, and now you're stepping away from it would be would be quite difficult. It'd be difficult to step away from haptics because right, you, you, right they're and, just there on your feet, and especially it, currently I don't have them because you know I just upgraded to the 
uh, the Husing Bell or however you say it, the sprints. So I had to order some different brackets for the motors from Calvin at Sim 3D. Which is in the UK. Guy in the UK. Just yeah. the brackets from him has taken over a month already. Yeah, he was still made about the two months and months and months and months. Now, we circle back a little bit. The RC stuff, That's so you're doing the painting of, of, of those. But uh-huh. that, that brings into engineering because we get the odd photograph of stuff you have created. Like uh, months and months and months ago, you had this big massive... Is it a, a, a foot? Was it for the brake pedal to stop your foot oh, yeah. stepping off? Or the accelerator pedals? You're yeah. hearing this stuff. I, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, I've always loved tinkering and, and building and, and making stuff. And that was one of the things that I loved about, you know, RC. Because, you know, you, you, you buy an RC kit and you, and you get to build it. You know, every little, you know, every little seal in the, you had to build the shock absorbers with all the seals and Fill them with oil and, you know, every nut, screw, bolt, seal, everything is all, you just get bags and bags of stuff and you get to put it together and make, you know, make an RC car. And that was one of the reasons why I wanted to go with uh, the Hesinkveld Sprints too, is that they're a lot more adjustable than the Fanatec V3. So, yeah. you know, the Fanatec V3 there, I'm not going to, I'm not going to bash Fanatec. I've had excellent luck with Fanatec. I know some people have not. And you know that's a shame, but I got really good use out of the out of those V three pedals. Uh, but I wanted something I wanted something a little bit better, something a little bit more adjustable. So I I, I'm, I frighten myself with them that I sometimes I feel like I'm pushing so hard on them that they're going to collapse. You know, I just, I just really do. It's just they're they're cracking cracking piece of engineering. They really are good. Well, you know, and that's another thing that I why I went with the sprints is because not only do they have the mechanical adjustability, but that software that they have is, was way better than the, than the software you had with the, with the Fanatec pedals, which was basically non-existent. You set your, you set your travel and your, and your, your in points. And that was about it. Well, I got you to know. say, I mean, since you've got those and done some of the yeah. things you have, I have seen, I mean, your, your, Driving skill level has taken a big leap forward of of late. Oh yeah, big big step. Just watching a yeah. couple of the races that we've been in, because again, the uh-huh. time thing's not always possible. But the last couple of races that you've been in, you you've been there. You had a re- very unlucky spin at Laguna Seca. Um, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah, which, but, which Paul Mitchell had on his latest video. But you you were so, 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 so that so Paul fast. Mitchell video. So what's that? You were but you were so so fast there, and that's a, that's a leap. That's a real good, really fantastic yeah. leap, and that that is down to time, experience, but it's getting that oh, yeah. extra feeling and that, that getting the braking good as well. Okay, so yeah, how would you describe how you drive? How would you be? What is your driving style? You know, is it besides poorly? Um, <laughs> okay, so I would, so, there was, I, would, so I would say that I, I'm I'm. I, when I get when I get in traffic, I I get a little uh, I get a little nervous mm. and probably a little bit timid because you know I, I kind of approach sim racing as if I'm in a real race car and the 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 biggest thing for me is you know no contact driving clean driving like a gentleman I have a I have a hard time I have a hard time trying to block people. Um, I always feel like that I'm that if, if somebody's faster, most of the time I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna let it. Yeah, there's there's a balance. Um, there's a balance. I right. I don't. The the I would rather I would rather come in dead last than ruin somebody else's race. Uh, I think you're you right. know I get I get nervous even before fun races like you know when we do the well, even when we do like the roulette where it's just you know it's all, it's all for fun. I still get nervous because I'm just definitely afraid. Of ruining somebody else's yeah, you, race. You want to have a good race, and you want them to have a good race as well. I mean, absolutely. And, and that's, but that's, but that's why you fit in well in it with together. the other. Yeah, that, that's why you fit in well it together. And you know, I, I kind of, I try to put myself in other people's position. I don't want somebody ruining my race. You know, by the same token, I certainly don't want to ruin somebody else's race. That's so. That's kind of. I think that. I guess that's kind of my driving style. I guess. I think there's a a, a, def, a thing you can define in that a bit further, Matthew. You you don't you don't want to race with people that will ruin your race and just not be bothered about it. 
being I, I I want to race with people that are bothered, even if it's accidental. I don't want to race with people that think that yeah, I'm just going to bully my way through, and I don't care. Right. It's only a game, yeah. and you know, it's more than that to a lot of us. And that there is that gentleman you mentioned it, the gentleman thing. And I, like, I harp on about it yeah. that we were gentlemen racers as much as we can. Accidents will happen, but you know, you, we we care for the other people that are around us and we uh, and the fun that they have with us. So, um, that, that's that's great because that that reinforces exactly why you fit in with the stuff that we're the doing. Bongos. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Um, I hate to ask this question because I know the answer, but you're going to tell me about it anyway. Do you have a favourite car, Matthew? <laughs> Are you talking about in ACC? Yeah, let's go ACC. Oh, well, yeah, that's the, the Ferrari, you know. And it's it, the thing is, Robin, is I've never really had any kind of loyalty to Ferrari or any other manufacturer. But when I started ACC, I was using the the the, the 488, the first one they had yep. in, in ACC. And uh, I I tried some other cars, and I just I just felt most comfortable in the in the Ferrari, and was able to have pretty good pace in the Ferrari. And again, I you know I had tried other cars, but I just I just always ended up going back to the Ferrari, and that's just what I just stuck with. Believe me, I wish I was like you because you can you can switch cars, and you can be just as fast in the in the BMW and just as fast in the, I remember you were in the McLaren for a while. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think you, didn't you try the As, AMG for a while? Too? It was for a season at the AMG, a season in the Aston, yeah. a season in the McLaren, a season in the Porsche. And it, as it changed as well. And then this, the, the boring BMW. Um, <laughs> yeah. I just, I just, I just can't do that. I can't, you know, I always, I, I always feel, I don't know. It always just feels off to me and I can't ever find the pace. Like there's, there's, you're right, and getting and uh, Roger again is a Porsche man through and through. You mm-hmm. drive anything else from uh, under duress a Porsche, and there's a lot to be said for because you learn all the little oddities because all the cars have their own little oddities. Yeah, and I've you know as, and I, I I kind of forced myself to go. I'm going to go through the roster and try them all, but give them a, a, a fair shake. <laughs> to have given the BMW more than a fair shake. It's the most the car that I have driven most in ace. In LFM, and probably I haven't looked at the overall stats, but in LFM, crazy amount of laps in it. Um, and I just got bored at the end of that last season. And as a joke, I jumped into the Ferrari, which I've never, ever really done. And we're getting on really well, but don't tell me. Yeah, it's because he'll go. I, I like it. You know, <laughs> I, it, it just it, it, it seems to suit me. And, yeah. you know, with the two, with the, the 296 is easier to drive than the 488 was. I liked the 488 too, but again, that was just, it was what I was used to. Um, and then when the 296 came out, everybody was driving it because they were like, oh, that's the new, that's the new BMW. You know, everybody's going to use that because it's easy to drive. It's the, it's the newbie car, you know? It's, and, uh, it's easy. I mean, it's, it's, I would say it's on a parallel now with the, 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 McLar- the McLaren seems to be an all rounder. The Ferrari seems to be an all rounder. Um, and then there's the almost as good, but you need to have a bit more, not skill, learn it more. Like the the uh, the Aston Martin, the BMW is a good starter car, but it's not a very exciting car. It's a bit bland. It's a good car, but it's pretty bland. Uh, and mm-hmm. then the Porsche is a specialist thing altogether. Uh, and and even then, trying to get the most out of the Bentley is 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 a skill as well. You know, um, but. Well, we keep on trying. It's interesting that that you've stuck with that car, and you weren't a big, big Ferrari guy, but it's the car you've got to know, and yeah, and and that that makes sense because on track, because there's no surprises with it that way. Okay, so um, you're not changing cars then. You're going to stick with that Ferrari. I mean. I'm- you know, I mean, you spoke you know, who, knows, who knows what's, knows what's going to happen. I, I did have, uh, when I was in that uh, Xbox league uh, a couple years ago, I in that league, you through one season, you had to switch cars. You had to do the first third of the season in one car, the middle third in a different car, 
and the last third in a in a in a in a another car. And I, I got along pretty good with the AMG. Yeah, it's so like one of these days I might go back and see how I get along with AMG. But you know, I, I'm I'm one of those people that you know I'm I'm a creature of habit. I like things that feel yeah, yeah. comfortable Absolutely. to me. And the you know the Ferrari has just always kind of just been my deal. So you mentioned all the, the kit that you had, and you've got your Husk Converted pedals, steering wheel wise now and base. Where, where are you now? What, what is the the, the unit you're using? The, the, I'm still using that that Fanatec CSL DD. Okay. Good. With the uh, I have the Universal Hub on there, and then I bought a wheel from Turn. Okay. Are you familiar with yeah, Turn yeah, Racing? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's one of the kind of the half. The half circle one, okay. You know, it's like I think a three twenty or a three hundred five. I'm not sure which size it is. And then, what are sports in general? In a, I mean, you you've been watching a little bit of you put a link up today about Alton Park and the British uh, yeah touring car, which was a wet. And some of the guys were at it today. I think is it Matt? I think yeah. at it today. I mean, it started. I watched the practice earlier this morning, and it was kind of moist, and then it got really, really wet. Um, yeah. I, I, I love the British tracks, except uh, Brands Hatch. Oh, except Brands. Yeah, I just can't. I, I, it's one of those things. It's, I, I don't like it because I'm not very good there. For some reason, I just can't find. I can't find the rhythm there. But yeah. you know, I love Silverstone. I love Olden Park. Um, I I love Snetterton, yeah. which you know yeah. is an unpopular opinion. Yeah. A lot of people hate it. Snetterton. I love it. I I drive Stetterton all day long if I could. Um, and what's the other one? Am I leaving one out? Snetterton, Oldham Park, Silverstone, Bronzach. Yeah, I guess that's it. Took me a while. It took me a while to get used to Silverstone, but I, I love it now. Donington. Donning what is it? Oh, yeah, Donington. I love Donington. Donington. There you go. I, had a win, I had a win there on roulette in, at Donington. Yeah, I would have done Dan, Dan Mathias chasing me down. Yeah, <laughs> I'll oh, flip. There's pressure for you. Uh, yeah, I, I was the LFM last week was in Donington and then and, and it done me well last week. So I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Do you do, do you follow motorsport as well, like Formula One or is there anything else? Do you yeah, watch any local, yeah, I love, local homebrew stuff? Love Formula One. In, in in fact, you know, the thing about Formula One, I've I've always loved Formula One, but growing up in the states. Before there was cable, we never got we never got Formula One. Yeah, and there there was a a thing on on ABC, which is a big network here in the states. They used to have a show called Wide World of Sports. Wide World of Sport. We got it. Yeah, it was a Sunday morning thing we watched here. Yeah, we clips. Well, that was it. That was the only time that we ever got Formula One when I was a kid. We'll flip. And whenever they had Formula One on Wide World of Sports, my sister and I were. You know, we'd be glued to the set, you know, to see the guys like, uh, you know, Nigel Mansell and K.K. Rosberg and um, Ayrton Senna. And we loved Nicky Lauda. And, you know, we thought that was the coolest thing in the world. And then later on, as I got older and cable came around, they had a uh, a channel called Speed Vision or Speed Network or something. And they Speed they started they started showing every single round of the Formula One championship. And that was just I was just I was just in heaven. And in fact, Another thing that Speed Vision did is when when the twenty four hour of Le Mans would come on, they would show twenty four hours nonstop, wow. flag to flag, and uh, that was just that was just heaven to me. But Formula One was tough. We didn't get we didn't get a lot of that stuff in the states when I was a kid. We you know we got NASCAR and the and the Indy five hundred. That was about it. But, but but Formula One has got so big in the states now with all the yeah. multiple races, but from the latest in Vegas and Miami and. Kota and Indy and Kota, yeah. No, well, like you know, it's the, the the track places that they've been to, um, and more, more maybe on the horizon as well. So, um, uh, yeah, would, would it, if I was going to the American one, what would it be? Well, I like Vegas, we know that, um, but I think it would, I think it would have to be probably Kota. Yeah, well, you'd you'd have to go to Kota because then you you know. Then you'd probably run into me. Yeah, definitely. I mean, Kuda, I mean, I want to get up on that. V- I'm sure it's a VIP, that big scary. That was a big tower. tower. That must be very scary. The wind, you must feel the wind in that. Um, with, with sim racing, then how do you fit that around with your life? So you you work you work from home quite a bit, okay? Mm-hmm. But, I mean, when do you get into the rig? Is it 
early evenings? Do you get in every day? How do you fit that right life? Well, when I was when I was really hitting LFM hard and heavy, I've I've taken a break from uh, uh, LFM oh, for a while now. Yeah. And you know, and and I, I hate to say this, but you know, Ro- Roger is right about some of the people in LFM. It can, it can be it can be almost the, really the only difference between LFM and public lobbies is they have a policing system where you can report people. It can, you know, it's, it can be a real viper pit. I mean, yeah, I mean, it can be. And the the very last race that I did at LFM, which was last August, was at uh, the Nurburgring. Qualified really well. Started close to the front, and then I guess let's see, turn one, two, turn three. Some guy dive bombed from two yeah. cars back, spun me out, and so I was fighting from the back the whole way. And there was some guys at the back that were just driving like, as you would say, absolute numpties, and just taking weird lines and I was trying to get through and I ended up bumping a guy and he reported me. It's the first and only time I've ever been reported at, at LFM. And I got a penalty and I'm about right now, I'm about that far from being a rookie again. And so I was like, man, you know, I'm just going to, I'm going to take a break from LFM. It's so I ended up t- taking a two season break. It's a strange format. I mean, 25 minute races and you're with people that a lot of them, and we've seen some of those guys come over to race with us, and they come over with that same all or nothing attitude. Some of yeah. them, some of them, and thankfully, the majority of them that have came over with that attitude have 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 changed their ways. But a few of them haven't been able to. They constantly were getting involved in accidents and bits and pieces, and and writing it off. And they have some of them yeah. slipped away from bunger racing. But it is a you know, it's twenty five minutes. It is. I wouldn't even say samurai because there's honor, honor among samurai, but you know it's just they're just fighters. Fist, it's a fist fight for twenty five minutes, um, and there's there's no no little love lost. There are some good racers in there, and I have had some yeah, yeah. fantastic races, but unfortunately, do you ha- you don't have maybe as many as the public lobbies, but not far behind it, especially when you get further down that. Those splits, even though with the top split, I've done a lot of split one stuff of late because I put yeah. too much time into it. Yes, you still get it, but not just as much. But as soon as you get down the tier end of split two and into split three, yes, there's some good people there, but you're more likely to get punished by random acts of right. destru- destruction there. Right. And unfortunately <laughs> for me, uh, because the way my life has changed, that is the platform that's available to me at 9 a.m. Yeah. in the morning um, through. Uh, and I'm not happy to sit and do single player. And, and yeah, I mean, yes, there's things I could do, but I, I'm a competitive bugger. And I, I, I like that bit of it bit of it as well. Well, you know, and that's one of the things that attracted me to LFM is that, you know, they run races all day long. So as soon as you find time, you can jump yeah, in and run a race. And that's what... That's what I was going to tell you before we kind of got sidetracked is, you know, when I would work from home and I was hitting LFM hard on my lunch break, I could jump over there and, and run a 25 minute race on my lunch break, you know, and I was doing that. Or as soon as I would get off, cause I get off work at four o'clock. My wife doesn't get off until five. She's usually, she's usually not home until five 30. So I could, I could run one, maybe two races right when I got off work at, at four o'clock. But she's by, I'll come into the door and frown, Matthew, if you're sitting there, when she comes into the door and you're sitting in the rig, <laughs> you don't have dinner. Why? And uh, oh, I, always, I always make sure to let her know if I'm going to be racing when she <laughs> comes home. But yeah, typically, typically dinner is on the table and ready to go when she gets home. Good stuff. Brilliant. Yeah, um, I'm no, I'm no dummy. <laughs> too right. You have to you know, <laughs> uh, side your bread's buttered on, especially if you are married the length right. of time that we have. Um, happy wife, happy life. If you were. I'm going to talk to your mate right now and tell him that he wanted to do it. Would you recommend that he would start this the way that you did? Dip the toe in the water or... Because in COVID, that didn't happen. A lot of people spent a lot of money on COVID, over COVID on, on very expensive kit that yeah. built a gut in it. I don't really like this or it's not for me. I don't really yeah. Like I mean, you know, it would, have been, it would have been nice to maybe have known somebody that had a rig that I could you know, go over to their house and try it out or whatever. But yeah, I would probably, 
I would probably recommend to somebody, you know, start small, see if it's going to be something that you might want to get into. But, you know, I mean, hey, if you're if you're sure about it, go ahead and, you know, jump in with both feet and, you know, get a good rig and 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 a good good wheelbase and good pedals and all and all that, you know. But, you know, there's you know, it, it is a, we talk about it all the time. It is a rabbit hole. I mean, you could spend a ton of money on on um, on sim racing because like like I don't I don't have. I don't have triples. I have a, a 55 inch 4k mounted to the wall. And that was the original setup that I went with. And, you know, that's what my wife agreed to. So that's what I'm, she's the boss. I'm staying with. Yeah. Fair enough. It's a lovely big screen. Happy, yeah. Happy it's it's nice. Happy it's that. nice. The way we, I got it set up. I, you know, I like it. I started that. I'd like to have triples, but we just, we really don't, we really just don't have the room for triples because we live in a three bedroom house and the, and our extra bedroom that we, you know, cause we, and we have a guest room for when, uh, kids or grandkids are yeah. here. Um, we have the, the big playroom, what we call a bonus room where I have my rig set up. And then the, the third room is, is the office, which is where I have all my, my painting stuff set up. Cause I have a big workbench in there with my compressor for my airbrush and all, yeah. and all that stuff. So you there's still, really not three of them. You still do a lot of that. Oh yeah. What's that now? Are you still taking commissions for painting of RC cars? I have I have cut back quite a bit. I'm only doing I'll only do I'll only work for people that are existing customers, people that I've painted for in the past. Um in fact there's a couple guys that I paint for that are like sponsored drivers, so they always have to have the same paint job on their car, so they always come to me. I'll always paint for those guys. Mm-hmm. Um, but new customers, I'm not. I'm not taking any new customers. But it must pay. It pays a bit for the hobby. Yeah, that's. I mean, that's that's how I bought, bought pretty much all my sim gear with. The only thing that the only thing that I didn't buy out of that that I actually paid for out of my actual house fund or home fund mm-hmm. was the was the PC. Yeah. Well. Yeah. What are you doing again? That only lasts three or four or five years if, if you're lucky. And then it it, yeah. it it demands attention as well. I am so lucky to have this space here. I mean, this is a yeah, light nice. building from the house. There's no way. Yeah, to... the, the room where you race, that's like, that's separate from the main house, right? So it's like, oh. It's behind that wall, this this unit here. So this is, sort of sticks out 90 degrees from the wall. So in behind that bookcase type thing, I have it solid back with the... So, uh, the the left when I'm in my rig, the left hand side of it, um, where my keyboards and stuff are, is the back of that wall. That's in round that corner, and then there's a podcast desk with Mike there that my wife does recording stuff as well. Then there's the big fifty five inch TV over there for Xbox and stuff, which I haven't touched in so long. It's terrible. Um, so yeah, it's a good big big space. Um, this was yeah, a nice. uh, this was a big big open garage. Um, you would have had six cars in here at one time with big sliding doors on it, and I split it up into four rooms and a then a bathroom. So, nice. um, there's, there's like there's a tool room and workbench and all vices and all that gear, and then over there and the store here, and then a big front bed. And yeah, it's fabulous because I couldn't have any of this stuff. I mean, when can I have Back to the Future stuff sitting out in a picture frame in the middle of the house? You, you couldn't have it. So yeah. this is different man, different man key of heaven here. Um, nice. So I, I love it. I love it. It's great. And it's nice to have. You mentioned before about taking me off in Barcelona. Are, are there any other sim yeah. sim things that you remember or highlights that you remember over your, over the last few years that really stick out? A win or something weird or wonderful that happened? Uh, I mean, nothing. Well, I mean, probably, probably my... My number one highlight would be my my first and my first and only win in LFM, which was at uh, Indianapolis at night, and that was actually that was actually one of my very last races in the four eight eight before the new Ferrari came out, and uh, my that was win. that was pretty special. Was actually actually getting a win. My first, win. I think it was like in split two or something. Yes. Split two or three. I can remember me too. I mean, I was I had my first win there as well. Yeah, I was watching the stream when you did that. Yeah, he's all in quiet because he knew I could do a robin, as it says it's coined now. He'd done a robin, and I remember I took took the lead after the first couple of minutes and had to, that 
25 minute race that 20 minutes seemed like it was two three hours oh yeah it's it's hard when you're in the lead man it's a lot of pressure it's pretty I, you know i i succumbed to that pressure at laguna seca on the 90 minute thing the other day because i had you know lloyd reed who made I he's fast yeah and um uh, I I just I just nipped him on qualifying and and got him at the start, but he was he was on my bumper for the first five laps, and you know the famous famous last words in my brain was I'm I'm going to break just a little bit later for the cork. <laughs> Don't stuff. change a thing. You know? Don't change a thing. <laughs> but you know, that's why I love sim racing because it's you, you know it's not. I said you hear me say this a lot. You know a fast lap does does not win a race. And it just right. doesn't. And and you can be really, really fast, but as soon as you've got your head around the car and how your wheels work and how the pedals work and how basic setups work, then there's a whole new set of skills. It's So there's one skill is uh, it's far easier to chase somebody than it is to lead a race. So you find yourself out at the Absolutely. front, like even in motocross, but for me, and I'm sure with your RC racing as well, you know, when you were re- racing, there's a different pressure when you're out in front. And then there's the pressure of, of uh, chasing somebody and chasing them enough and knowing that you're 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 trying to make them uncomfortable. Oh, absolutely! But not completely wreck yourself at the same time. And it's it's a it's a game of chess that you're looking for weaknesses and places where you can go. Uh, and and then also not learning that that when there's a gap, it's always a gap. I mean, there's a gap there, but it's a it's a it's this this. Thing it's living in my head, rent free at the moment. This this vortex of danger thing that you yeah. see, you see that ever closing gap. There's it's actually that was coined by an American guy that his name is Probes, Trinity Probes. Probes. I've been watching the the, the video when he first started talking about that where when where that happened at it was at Daytona, um, and that the race where it happened in and where he started to talk about that, and I'm actually I'm actually preparing some some a, a video with this scripting it at the moment. It's taken a while, but it's it, there's 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 that thing as well about that pressure of of how to overtake well overtake safely how to close that vortex when you're in front to stop people to put them off going in there but not not to block them as in I, I'm going to move in the braking zone so I mean, there's there's so many extra skills not just going fast. And there's so many more skills involved, and then if you get down the old setup route, and I just get into the car and drive. But now I find yeah. myself going, hmm, maybe if I if I actually look at this and learn about lowering the front or raising the back, or I'm, I'm, that's the stage that I'm at now, where some people are way way ahead that way. I've just got to yeah. went be able to go pretty well. But no, I don't ever, I I don't ever mess with setups. No, I, I, you know, I, I, I tried, but it's, it's just so much easier to just, to just buy a setup, jump in the car, load it up, make sure my tire pressures are good. You know, my, my TC, my brake bias, all that stuff. And then just, it just go, See, you I don't know, want to just brake bias. I don't even, I don't even, I, like whatever's the default in it in my go setup setup. That's what I race on. It's, yeah, I mean, there was uh, a other night. Somebody was saying to me, "Oh, you have to adjust your brake bias because you're you're losing yeah, the that head of a slippy." That was me. Yeah, and I've gone. Fuck! I what do I do to a Ford? But what would I change it? I've got, I've got the thing with the rear brake dial here, but but what do I do with that? I don't I don't understand that, so I have to teach myself that. That's that constant learning process. Um, so yeah. I, sorry. No, I was just gonna say, I you know I learned a lot on you know just little not really tricks, but just things like brake bias and, and that kind of stuff, just by watching people on, on YouTube, people like, you know, like Zaza and, um, uh, Jardier's group and, and Nils Noyak, yeah, whatever yeah, his yeah, name is, yeah. those kind of guys talking about, you know, talking about brake bias, and that kind of stuff. I would freak me out. I mean, I'd be sitting watching them on the big screen of it. We're in, in the main, in the main house was so YouTube up there. And I would, he on the sofa sitting watching this uh, way back and and I go did, did, did he just adjust something there and I'd be getting right up to the screen and watching him changing traction control on a lap mm-hmm. you know, different yeah. traction control for different cores I thought wow yeah. and that, I've, and, I've started doing that too on a couple of tracks like particularly like at um, uh, Donington Park 
Which I, I noticed that I was I was losing tons of time coming out of those two yeah. real tight hairpins. Yeah. So I programmed my wheel where you know my my uh, TC up button takes it to a certain TC, and then my TC down button takes it to another TC. So whenever I after I go through that chicane, I'm getting ready for those two uh, uh, hairpins. I turn it down to five. And then once I'm done with that, I go back up to eight or nine or whatever. I had. Well, I was doing that last week. So I was going. I was running seven and four. So seven and then down to four, and that's yeah. And then back up to seven again, and away I went. And I just thought, ah, you started to do this now. But it, it is that pat in your head, rubbing your belly thing. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Because you, what what really sucks is when you forget. Yeah, to, to, to turn it off. Uh, <laughs> especially <laughs> some, especially some place like Donington, because. If you don't have your TC at the right spot when you go into turn one, and you you stomp the stomp the throttle when you're coming out of turn one, it's you're going around. Hey, um, sim racing's great. It's came on so much from that those first wheels that we bought back in console days and the old original Xbox 360 wheels that Microsoft had. Yeah, and it continues. And now we have Huskavet and Haptic and and uh, the the stuff with VR at the moment. The quality of it is going up and up and up. Where do you see it going in the hardware and a sort of a social way? As is, is, is this hardware wise, where do are we going to be all in VR in ten years? And the other question would be, um, is it now something that we're going to start watching more and more of of uh, of virtual racing as a championship? Is it something we're going to follow more? Well, the, the VR thing, I think VR is going to be probably become more popular as the price of the VR setups go down. Um, I've thought about going VR, but you know, my thing is, is I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a hot blooded, sweaty guy anyway. Yeah. And I can't, I can't see wearing that thing on my face for, for an hour. Um, as far as, as far as like the esports question goes and stuff like that, I guess it just all depends on the person because I wouldn't, I would never turn on my TV and watch, a sim race for an hour of those, you know, of those top tier guys. If I'm going to watch top tier guys, I'm going to watch real racing. Like, you know, uh, you know, Lamar or, you know, 12 hours or 24 hours of Daytona or formula one or IndyCar or something like that. I'm going to, I want to watch real racing. The sim racing is for, for people like me, you know, that, that, that the amateur guy who, who doesn't have the money or the, or the, um, or the resources to be able to get into real racing. That's what that's what sim racing is is for me. It's it's my opportunity to kind of step in those guys' shoes for a while and you know be be a be a racer for an hour or or or, or whatever you know and race with like minded people like like you and you know um, all the all the bongos. I mean, it's too yeah. too many today and bunch of bunch of great people. But as far as watching it on TV. I, I, I would rather watch real racing on TV. I love it, Matthew, that you're, I mean, you're active in the community. The posts go up, the funnies go up, uh, the memes go up. You know, so I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm glad you're part of it, and I'm glad you're having fun with it. I am too. I, I just wish I wish I could race with you guys more. I'm I'm thinking about talking to my boss at work and making arrangements with him because it's only it's only every other Thursday yeah. that I need like yeah, yeah. to get off an hour early so I can be part of Warriors. I do because I really want to. I really want to get into that Warrior series. It's good, which uh, is the, the the time. It's just three. It's season three. A little bit, a little bit into my into my work day, but it I is think that my, it is that balance. You know, so we can't be too late for the UK guys, the the European guys, and right. we can't be too early for some American guys. But you're also not just on the. On the east coast here, you're a bit further away time zone again, so it is it is difficult that way. But we, we um, if you heard the chat with Zach, Zach was saying that he yeah. he he brought all the dates into his boss and said, "I cannot work here." Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> fucking yeah. hell. I think that's what I'm going to do. I think that's what I'm going to do for next for next season's Warriors. And you know, I I know that you know if I said, "Hey, you know, can I join Warriors now?" and it's like that that's another part of kind of how I am about sim racing is I don't want to I don't want to join mid season yeah you know what I mean because something that happened in in uh, when I was when I was doing the league racing on uh, Xbox 
some guy that had never raced with us before. And I'm, I'm, we're getting near the end of the season. And I'm like fighting for championship points. Yeah. I'm like, this I is think what... at this time I'm like, I'm like in fourth, fourth spot yeah. for, for championship points. This guy who's never raced with us before, he comes into the race. Rex. He, he wrecks me as I'm fighting for points. And then he's like, well, you know, hey, sorry. Uh, you know, it's we, like, we are at the halfway on, point now, and that's been Warriors is pretty much closed before that very yeah. reason. Uh, and we don't want a championship decided for that. There's a new championship coming, a Tuesday night game yeah. coming, which is a bit lighter, but a bit of fun as well. Um, the Bongo World Series. Um, so that'll be that's that'll that'll be kind of good, and then we're gonna try and do some longer stuff as well. So I'm 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 training them, Matthew. We were done nineteen, <laughs> couple of ninety minutes. So it was ninety minutes at Brands Hatch last week, which is hard work. Yeah, that was hard. So ninety, 90 minutes, ninety minutes is just that, that's a little bit too long for me. I was, I was, I was completely spent after that ninety minutes at at. Uh, Laguna Seca, and I even got to make it an extra pit stop yeah. to to catch my breath because <laughs> I I calculated for seventy five minutes instead of ninety minutes. Matthew, I love having you as part of the community. You're a great member. You were with me at the very very beginning, and when we bumped together that very very first time, and I, I really love having you around because I love the sense of humor and the quirky, and I love the speed and seeing how you've progressed along with. With me as well, we sort of came along together. Yeah. It's fantastic, and and everybody really. I mean, you know, I see improvement in just about everybody in the in the group. You know, it's been good for people. It's been good for I mean, for 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 different reasons. For for okay, first of all, for their racing, they've got some good racing. They've learned stuff, and they've got good competitive races. People have, have had laughs as well, but I think just the 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 friendship part of it as well there's been good solid friendships have been I mean, for starting to be forged instead of all this and, and mm-hmm. it caught me absolutely by surprise you know it really I mean when I started the stream those uh, those LFM races back then it was because I was doing an uh, another podcast thing I thought I have the kit I might as well do it and then it's kind of it's mushroomed into this fantastic thing so yeah, thank you it's fun yeah um, I'm glad to glad to be part of it I I really feel honored that you asked me to to do the chat with you brilliant well i'm just up like i said i you know i kind of feel sometimes like i don't i'm I, I don't feel like i i get involved as much as i should and you know a lot of that is just because of well you just schedule like, you're just american you know? that's just that's just well that's that's an american thing <laughs> you could. and matthew thank you very very much for chatting to me this evening it has been great thank you and i will see you on track very 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 soon thank you let's do it good luck and Thank we're you. done. We're done, Matthew. It's all over. All right. That was good. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, for it. Yeah, that was easy. Yeah, you see? Tended to talk about it. Loads of stuff to do. Right, I am going to go and I'm going to switch my rig on. I know it's late here. I am I am tomorrow morning, 9.15 or half nine tomorrow morning. It's off season night, but I am going to go and do some uh, Nordish Life stuff. You're going to you're gonna brave the green hell, huh? Yeah. Well, it was lovely being there in person last year, and and now to have an ace. I know there's other sims to have it, but it's nice to have, to have an ACC now. So I'm going to switch it on here and have half an hour, and then tomorrow I'm going to do a bit. But I think LFM are running some off season races, so I'm going yeah, to do a couple of those so. for my sins. You know, I'm 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 glad that LFM has did not add that to the calendar of the regular GT3 series. I could, I did, sorry, I didn't even look at that scene that was posted, and I didn't, I, I didn't look at it that closely actually. So they haven't added a twenty-five minute Nordic life race. How could you do no. that? <laughs> three, three laps. Yeah, and <laughs> three laps and qualifying. And uh, I mean, you would have to qualify even if, even if it was to work at all. You would have to try and qualify on the GP circuit because it would just take yeah. too long. Well, one thing that one thing I found because I did watch I did watch a few streams today. I was watching Dan Lama and some other people. Um, when you when you first come out of the pits and you're doing your first lap around the GP circuit, you come short. The, the first the first lap, yeah. You don't do the go, whole thing. Don't go left onto the Nordschleife. Stay to the right, and yeah. then you can then you'll then you'll start your I see your that. your out your your full lap. I have seen that for in real life is what they they do that there as well. In real life, yeah. they they do that and uh, it sort of cuts back in again. 
but I'm looking forward right. to turning left onto that bit and an, and an ACC car for the first. So, <laughs> right. Aye, aye, aye. I'm out of here. Goodbye. Thank you. I'll get the, right, the go up over the weekend sometime. Dan, Matthew, all, right, all the best to Nancy for me. Thank you. See you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye. Then he waddled away. Waddle, waddle. Then he waddled away. Waddle, waddle, waddle. Then he waddled away. Waddle. <laughs> never give up. Never surrender. We're back at Barcelona. I've got my number one plate again. We've got my mate Matthew in the blue and white Ferrari. He will do me no harm in this race. Let's see if we can stay ahead of Matthew. My car is gone. I'm slipping and sliding all over the place. He is catching me up. Look at that. He's coming right up behind me. But he's my mate. He won't do anything to me. No, he won't. He's flashing his lights. What? At the end of the street? He's... He's too far back to try anything. Ah, no, no way will he try anything. Uh, oh. Matthew! Matthew! What, what have you... What? We're we're friends. Just to check, did you did you hit me? Just oh, yeah, yeah. Let me see. Oh, oh yeah, I did. He did hit me. Oh, I, I wasn't mistaken. Then he waddled away.